We have been assigned to the third exploratory force of the Sagittarius Arm of the Galaxy. Looking into planets that may have changed in the million years since they were last visited. Our relatively small ship was a multi-species expedition. With the recent war tensions, were relatively high. But the powers that be in the Galactic Council have decided that we needed to set an example for the other branches of the Space Force. Ever so quietly indicating that we were supposed to get along or be quiet about it. Most of the crew had at least adjusted to the detent. Glax had adopted to the Imperious approach in his engineering bay. I, as second in command, was supposed to smooth over the day-to-day -day operations and report that everything was acceptable to the captain. Glax burst into my small and cramped quarters, made more small and more cramped by his very last statue and four arms. I can't stand it anymore! You've got to do something. About what? I asked. About that little vol rider who named the engines, Glax said. We can't have him in there anymore. What's he done now? He's taken it upon himself to improve the fans and environmental. We've been in space for 30 years and no one ever complained that they couldn't breathe. Without an obvious reason, of course. He doesn't see that as good enough and has started to install things all over the place with data links to almost everywhere else on the ship. He's also started to name the power generators. Glax imitated. Oh, I see Silly Simon is having a bad morning. Let's see if we can make him happy. And continued. As well as the engines. He's even got a beta shift doing it. He works for you, right? Has he ever not followed an order? No, he completes the work. No complaints about that. It's just the extras. Did I mention he drew eyes on the waste recycler plant? I understand he can be odd. I'm going to assume you've spoken with him about it already? Yes. And he gets this pet cell care look in his eyes, like I've hit him with rolled up cellulose fibres, and promises to never do it again, and then comes up with some other piece of insanity. I think he's doing it on purpose to drive me to an early hibernation. When we get to the next planet on our run, I'll take him with me to the planet for survey. During the shuttle, I'll see if I can get him to behave. Would that be acceptable? Yes. Sorry to rush in like this, but I have no patience with this kind of thing anymore. Glax settled a bit and left my quarters. Glax wasn't exactly the most patient chief engineer, but he was good at his job. It's not like this was new territory either. There were half a dozen personality disputes in the last month. Most of the time, the humans were pretty easygoing. Easy to command and quick to do anything you ask of them. It's when they get bored that the differences started to manifest themselves. One of them being what passed for entertainment in the human barracks. The total time dedicated to physical fitness was incredible. They even had direct physical contests of strength and skill. Humans weren't small, but they weren't the largest species on the ship. However, I wouldn't want to stand up to one without my rank to back me up. A few months ago, the lone Gertin saw the humans had booked the multi-purpose room for three hours every day, and came by to see what they were doing. He ran to me with fear in his eyes, screaming, They're killing each other! Upon investigation, we found they were playing at a sport called boxing although there was no box anywhere and only four posts with ropes straight between them. The chief medic, Mott, was with me and watched in rapt amazement as the humans played their sports. Hello, sir. You wouldn't want to place a bet, would you? Johnson and Green are up next. Johnson's looking pretty good lately. The highest-ranking human asked as the boxing continued. No, I don't think so. You're not killing each other, correct? No, sir. Just a bit of fun. Mott raised her hand slightly and asked, You will need medical attention after your play, correct? Maybe a bandage or two. Nothing we can't handle. But you're more than welcome to watch. Let me get someone to explain the rules for you. There are rules. Fascinating. Mott was intrigued, and now that she knew there was no immediate threat, she was in scientist mode. Are you sure my staff and I can't assist? Mott said, as she was guided to a ringside seat. 